Today's topic is the glandular epithelium. In this topic, we will discuss about the types of the glands and how do we classify the glands and classification according to their mode of secretion. And we'll show some photomicrographs to identify your that you can identify the different types of the glands. Now, a gland is a single cell or a group of cells specialized for secretions. The gland has a secretory unit which is lined with the glandular epithelium and it has also the supporting unit which is the stroma of the gland. So whenever we describe a gland, we describe it in two terms, the parenchyma which is the functional unit or the secretory unit of the gland and the stroma which is the connective portion, connective tissue portion or the supporting portion of the gland. Now how does the glands they develop? The glands they are derived from the ectoderm epithelium in which there is the invagination of the cells, epithelial cells below in the connective tissue. So these cells, epithelial cells, they proliferate and they grow downwards in a solid cord of the cells. Then later on, this solid cord of the cells, it becomes canalized and the duct of the gland is formed and is connected to its SNR unit or the secretory portion of the gland. Now the endocrine glands, they detach from the surface they do not require the duct to transport their secretions and they develop the blood vessels around them which transport their secretions to the distant areas. Now you can see here the follicles of the endocrine gland formation and they are the simple glandular parenchyma inside surrounded by the capillaries. Now, how do we classify the glands? So broadly, the glands, they are classified according to the products they have released from, their, from them into exocrine, endocrine, and the paracrine glands. The exocrine glands, they secrete their products onto a surface directly or through epithelial ducts or tubes that are connected to a surface. So it means that exocrine glands, they must have a duct system to secrete their products onto the surface or to the area of the destination. Whereas the endocrine glands, they do not have the duct system, they do not require the duct system, they secrete their products to the, into the connective tissue from which they enter the bloodstream and they are carried to the distant areas. For example, the thyroid gland, the uh, ovarian glands, the suprarenal glands, the pituitary gland. So they are all secrete their products into the bloodstream and it carries into the uh, later on into the distant areas. Now the parenchyme glands, they are the unicellular glands which secrete the substances that affects on the surrounding cells. The secretion of the parenchyme glands does not reach to the target cells, the bloodstream, they secrete their secretions into the surrounding tissue by which the process of the diffusion, they are carried to their cells in the nearby areas. For example, the enteroendocrine cells of the gastrointestinal tract and the pancreas. Now the exocrine glands, they are classified as either unicellular or multicellular. The unicellular exocrine glands is the example, the goblet cells, which are, so these glands, they, this is cellular gland. Now the multicellular exocrine glands, they are classified on the types of the ducts or modes of secretion and they can be simple or compound. Now the exocrine glands, they can be of the single layer of the epithelial cells which is capable of secreting their substances onto the surface. Now if the duct of this exocrine glands, how do we classify the exocrine glands on the basis of their ducts? So if there is a single duct, the single duct, then we call them as a simple glands and if the duct branches, 
then we call it a compound glands. Then we def define the different varieties of the simple glands and the compound glands. Now, there are various types of the secretory unit or the parenchyma of the gland. So, the parenchyma or the functional unit or the secretory unit of the gland can be in the shape of a tube-like, then it is called the tubular gland. It can be in the shape of the SNR and then it is called an SNR gland or it can be the parenchyma or the secretory portion or the functional unit of the gland can be in the shape of the alveoli. So we call it an alveolar gland. So it's simple nomenclature you can yourself describe that if the gland has a tubular secretory portion and the duct is uh, single duct and not branching, so then we call it as a simple tubular gland. And if the same gland, the, the duct branches, then it is called the compound gland. And if the parenchyma or the secretory unit is tubular, then we call it as a compound tubular gland respectively. So this is the classification showing you the different types of the multicellular exocrine glands. Now you see the, in the simple glands, we all have the, 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 there is also the ducts is a single one. It is not branching, although the parenchyma or the secretory portion may branch, but the duct is single. So you can see here that the duct, there is a single duct and the secretory portion or the parenchymal portion is tube-like. So we call it as a simple tubular gland. So examples are the intestinal glands. Then you can see that these simple, uh, the duct is single, but the secretory portion is branching and also it is the tube-like. So we call it as a simple branch tubular glands. For example, the gastric glands of the stomach. So in, you can see here that the secretory portion is alveolar-like and the duct is single. So we call it as a simple alveolar gland. Example is the uh, simple branched alveolar gland. So you can see here that there are the alveoli, they are branching. So example is the sebaceous glands. Now you can see in the compound types of the glands, the duct is branching. The duct is branching and similarly the SNI or the parenchyma or the secretory portion of the glands, they can be tube-like, they can be alveolar-like or they can be uh, both in the same type of the glands, the tube-like and alveolar-like. So we call them as a compound tubulo-alveolar glands. Example is the striary glands. And now you can see here, this is the compound alveolar glands like the memory glands and the compound tubular glands like the duodenal glands or the Brunner's glands, the best example of the compound tubular glands. Now you can see here the simple tubular glands. You can see the photomicrograph of the simple tubular glands with the long ducts and the pits and the tube-like SNR portions. So they are the intestinal glands. Now, the tubular glands, they can be coiled as examples in the sweat glands, apocrine sweat glands. They are coiled. They have the secretory unit in a tube-like fashion, but it is coiled on itself. So, it is called a simple coiled tubular glands. Now, the simple branched tubular glands, the example is the Brunner's glands or the esophageal glands of the uh, esophageal glands, the Brunner's gland of the uh, duodenum. The simple branched SNR glands, you can see here, the simple branched SNR glands, they are the mimomian glands, which are present in the eye, eyelids. <clears throat> now you can see here the compound glands. So the secretory portion here is the tube-like. So we call it as a compound tubular glands because the duct is branching. And you can see in the photomicrograph also. So the gastric glands or the gastric glands of the stomach, they are called the compound tubular glands. Now this is the example of the compound tubulo SNR glands, the photomicrograph of the pancreas showing you the compound tubulo SNR glands 
in which the parenchyma or the secretory portion of the gland is both the tube like and the acinar like so we call it as a tubulo acinar glands so there are various examples of these glands and you can quote these one or two examples at least according with the classification in your sq questions so these are the three varieties of the uh, glands according to their mode or the mechanism of secretion that is the merocrine the apocrine and the holocrine now according to the nature of the secretion there are three varieties the serous gland the mucous glands or the mixed type of the glands that that is when we see the consist feel the consistency or analyze the consistency of the secretion it could be a serous a mucous or a mixed type and there are three types of the sni we can see here which we can differentiate that there are different types of the sni to secrete the three types of the secretion now you can see here that the serous Uh, this these are the serous sni now in these serous sni you can see the cells they they are pyramidal shaped with a spherical nucleus towards the base they have a lot of the basal striations and there are apical granules which are embedded here and they store the secretory secretions of this sni now they are all they are every cell is surrounded by a modified myoepithelial cells which help in the contraction of individual cells to secrete their secretions into the lumen so the serous uh, sni they are eosinophilic they stain pink with the h and d stain they are extremely eosinophilic and because of these granules which are stored this stored this uh, storing the secretions Uh, the serous secretions and then they pour their secretions into the lumen now in the mucus type of the sni you can see the lumen is broad the cells are broad and flat they have a flattened nuclei and they stain basophilic with the h and d stain now they also have the myoepithelial cells on uh, each side of the uh, surrounding uh, uh, this uh, sni and they will help in the contraction of this uh, my uh, individual cells to pour their secretions into the lumen now there are also the mixed type of the secretion in which both the mucus and the serous secretions they pour their secretions into the ducts they are called the serous demilunes so the mucus sni with the crescent shaped demilun of the serous sni it is a mixed sni which will secrete their secretions in a mixed variety into the ducts so example of the pure serous secretion is the parotid gland the pure mucus secretion is the sublingual glands and the mixed type of the with the serous demilunes the mixed sni is the submandibular gland now you can see here this photomicrograph of this sebaceous gland and you can find out what is the type of this sebaceous glands so they are the types of the merocrine sweat glands and find out what is the type of this gland okay so thank you